Hello everybody, my name is Lindsay Sterling, I'm a violinist. Um, I see some of my Sterlingites are joining in, hello my Sterlingite. Um, and all the rest of you, thanks for joining. This is my first ever violin tutorial and uh, I'm pretty excited about it. This is something I've wanted to do for years and for just some reason I've never gotten to it. So here we go. Today I am excited to be partnering with Bose, hence why I'm wearing these really, really fashionable awesome headphones. I mean, can we just talk about how beautiful these are? I love them. They have them in different colors. They also gave me a black pair. If I can pull them out. Look how pretty. So, anyways, they're really awesome. I was testing them last night and uh, just even though I'm not technically using them now, I'm wearing them just because I think they're cool and I just wanted to thank Bose for sponsoring this. Also, they have amazing speakers. Little and big. But anyways, today what we want to focus on is, uh, for those of you who don't know me, um, like I said, I'm a violinist, and so we're going to be doing a violin tutorial. Um, and I want to start out, I was trying to think of like everything I could talk about with the violin, um, what did I think was the most important, and I wanted to start off with the bow, because I really do feel like the bow hand is the most intricate. Everybody like always thinks about the violin, and they want to stare at your fingers that are doing all the, you know, the note work on the left hand, but really, it's the right hand that makes the pretty sound. I mean, it's both of them, but I think the, the right hand is more responsible. So, let me grab my bow with no further ado. Um, okay, so first of all, let's go over the basic bow hold. Okay, so, here we go. Like I said, I'm excited. I feel like I've just got so much I wanna share, and I'm like, cool it down one step at a time. So first of all, how you do a correct bow hold. And what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna start super basic, and then um, towards the end, I'll give some tips for people that are more advanced um, for bow work. But first, I wanna start with a basic bow hold, then I wanna go and give you some exercises that will help you, one, learn the bow hold, second, make your hand looser, um, and then third, I wanna go on to some techniques that will help our more advanced players. So, let's get started. Okay, so for the bow hold, I'm gonna scoot closer, you guys are so far away. Okay, so how it starts is you put your thumb in this little crevice right here. That's where your thumb goes. And you're going to want to keep your thumb bent. Like, so you don't want a straight thumb, you want it bent. So it's sticking in there, it's bent. And then you're gonna take these two fingers and you're gonna wrap them around. And the thing is, you should be able to hold your bow with just those three with, you see it, my thumb is still slightly bent, not crazy bent, not like this, it's just a slight bend in the thumb. Um, and of course, also, everybody's bow hold is going to be a little bit different because everybody's hand is a little bit different. So, um, but the basic principles apply. So then, on either side of your thumb, so you can see the thumb right through the middle there, that's, that's the thumb, and on either side, you kind of just rest your fingers across the bow. And like I said, you should be able to hold it like that, but because you're just starting, it's probably gonna be all over the place, and so that's okay. Then, this hand, <laughs> this finger is gonna kinda just wrap and lay right in between this little piece right here, whatever it's called, and right there. It's just gonna kinda wrap around. And then last, your pinky is going to bend and hold the weight of the bow. So look, without the pinky, the bow dips. The pinky is kind of what keeps the bow controlled. So let's, let's go over that again. All right, first we put our thumb in this little crevice at the end of, this is what we call the frog of the bow. So right after the frog and between this little leather piece, you're gonna put your thumb and it's gonna be bent. Then you wrap these two fingers over and your thumb is still bent, then you rest this across, and then you rest your pinky. So this is what your bow hold looks like. See, the thumb is still bent. Okay, we're gonna do that one more time, because I know it takes practice, and the reason I know is because if I switch my bow hand, it's very difficult to like, oh, it feels almost impossible, and it reminds me of what it felt like when I first started. So I'm gonna do it with my other hand so we can do it and struggle together because this hand does not know what she's doing. So, finger in the crevice, or thumb in the crevice, 
put these two over and some people wrap all the way over if they have really long fingers. I have very small hands, which is the best for violin, but I've made do obviously. Um, so mine just kind of, I'm going back to my good hand so I can show you correctly. Mine just don't quite, mine don't quite reach the hair. Some people's do. Mine usually end up about here, but um, you can reach them farther. Over. So thumb, fingers, index finger lays across and then pinky stays bent. So this is the bow hold. And the thing is that makes the violin, one of the things that makes the violin very difficult is the fact that you have to be so relaxed. So the, um, the instinct is to grip this bow. Like whenever someone fakes the violin, they just grab it like this because you want to hold on to this and you're afraid as your hands moving all over the place that you're gonna, you're gonna drop it. But the thing is, it, this hand has to be very relaxed. And so it's important to like take your wrist right now. Um, and just kind of let it move and if it feels super tense like just let it bend but keep holding the bow don't let your pinky slip like I just did also guys my pinky nail right now I'm just realizing is a little bit long that's why my fingernails are so short is because it's hard for me to balance like it's supposed to if my pinky nail is getting in the way and right now it actually is and so I'll be cutting my pinky nail after this. But um, again, there's all kinds of little tiny tricks that will help you feel more comfortable. One of which is, especially on the bow hand, keeping your pinky nail super short. Okay, so then get your correct bow hold one more time. Thumb, fingers, index, pinky. Make sure your thumb is bent. Now just relax your wrist and make sure that it's not super tense because you're gonna want to tense up your entire arm but you're gonna learn that your shoulder can be relaxed in this position, your elbow, and especially your wrist um, is one of the things that's gonna to want to tense a lot. So, here we go. There's the basic bow hold. Now, I'm gonna talk you through some exercises that will help you. Um, and the nice thing about these is you can do these exercises as you're watching TV or as you're talking on the phone with your friends or there are things that don't take a ton of, um, I mean, they take attention, but you can multi you know, you can occupy your mind while you do them because it's just repetitive, repetitive movement. And I'm even gonna suggest, I remember when I was starting to learn these bow movements, I practiced with a pencil or a pen. So you can literally practice, and also it will allow you to be much more relaxed, but still practice the proper technique. So same thing. You can even pretend like this is the frog of the bow if it's a pen, and then you set your, hand on it like this. And so you can just kind of practice that bow setup and the pen is much lighter than the bow so my hand will automatically be more relaxed and it allows you to just practice it in a very comfortable way. Um, so that's something you can do because you can just practice set the setup over and over again. Um, if, you're have, if your arm is getting tired or your hands are getting tired on the bow, pick up a pencil or a pen. Um, also, all these exercises I'm about to teach you, you can do those with a pencil as well if they're too hard to do with the bow in the beginning. Um, okay, sorry, my hands, one thing not a lot of people know about me is I have sweaty hands. It's awful. Um, because like I remember from the time I was a kid, my mom would take my hand and she would wipe off the sweat before I was about to perform at my recitals because my hands just have always been clammy. And so, gosh, you better believe in shows, my hand is dripping with sweat and as I'm trying to like hold my bow. Um, okay, so. Anyways, <laughs> just a side note for you, my sweaty hands. Okay, so one of the bow exercises that I like a lot and it strengthens the pinky, um, my teacher would call them TikToks. So again, make sure your bow hold is correct. Remember, thumb is bent, two fingers, index fingers just kind of wrapped around. It's like the index fingers a sloth, just like laying on a tree. So that's your sloth one, because there's not a ton of tension here. It should be very light. This is the, um, the laziest finger of the bow hold for me, personally. It's not doing much, it's just kinda here to guide. Um, and then your pinky has to do a lot of work. I think the pinky and the thumb are the ones that are working the hardest. One, you're making sure to keep your thumb bent and you're making sure to keep your pinky bent. And so there are things called tick tocks. And you see, my hand is moving, my arm and wrist are staying the same. And what you wanna do, what you want to do is you can even kind of put your hand out and on your arm you don't want the bow hair also to touch skin it's not good for it it puts this oil from your body and your skin onto the bow and it makes it so the bow hairs don't um, stick as well so you don't want to touch the bow hair with your hands or your skin 
Um, but it's okay if it touches fabric. So what I'm doing right here is resting it on my arm. Oh, I need to be further back. Oh well, just imagine. And I am then lifting and then putting back. And so now you can see the bow hand. Woo! There we go. So what you want to do is a TikTok. You're using your bow hand to do it. Wow, sorry, my hands are so sweaty right now. I must be nervous. Um, but yeah, and so you can just practice that as well. Boop. And again, make sure your thumb is still bent and that these fingers are still wrapped around. The thumb is still right there in the middle. Boop. The thumb is peeking out like peekaboo. I've been playing peekaboo with my nieces. And then you're just going to practice. And it's the pinky. Look at that. The pinky is doing all the work. And it's like it's hinging on the thumb. So, like I said, that will get tiring pretty fast for your, for your wrist, even just kind of holding it, and it will get tired for your pinky. So again, you can just practice that with a pen or a pencil to kind of get it nice and strong. And again, these are great exercises to do. While one, I think you should do them every day while you're just actually practicing and super focused, but then when you're watching a movie later, hey, pull out a pen. Pull out your violin bow, and while you're watching the movie, just literally, and then you'll probably be like, oh, it slipped, oh. So like re restructure, put it back, and you can just watch your movie. And then you'll have to focus, because it'll slip, and that's okay. But this is what you want it to look like. Boop. You can even go all the way from your, boop. It's a very controlled movement, and it will strengthen this muscle right here, which the pinky is the weakest of the hand and it has to do the most work. So this is an exercise that will be so good for you. Um, okay, so those are, that's one bow exercise. Here's the second bow exercise that does so much good. And so I don't have an, what could I call this one? I could call it the spider dance. And so what this is doing is you see all these motions are in the, just pretty much the hand. Like your wrist can help a little bit, but look, it's mostly in my fingers. And it's just you're straightening everything out and then you're bending it. You're straightening and you're bending. And it all comes forward from the wrist and most of the action is done in the fingers. Oh my gosh, I need to do these more. My hand's actually getting a little tired and I'm supposed to be like, you know, the strong hand of violinist. Okay, um, but yeah, here we go. These are really good. Again, let's go over the bow hold. Thumb, fingers, pinky, index finger. And so you've got this beautiful, curled, relaxed bow hold. You can do TikToks with it. Tick, tock, tick, tock. Or the next exercise is these. And see what my hand is doing. It's like all kind of straightening, especially at the bottom. And then it's pulling up and straightening pulling up and the thumb is even in my case because my thumb is very short and my fingers are short um, even my thumb is going all the way straight when I get to the bottom there and then I'm pulling up so it's like a little push-up oh that's what we'll call them we'll call them they could be spider push-ups okay I'm gonna try it with my other hand to see how this feels also the tick-tock would be so hard Ooh, yeah that's really hard when you do it with the other hand this makes me have like memories of how awkward it once felt. Ooh, yeah, because this hand never holds the bow. Uh, yeah, so let me see. What, what best advice could I give you if you're literally doing this for the first time? Make sure not to let your thumb go straight on these TikToks. I would say if it's this hard for you, because if you've never done this with your bow before, I really do suggest you start first with the pen because it allows you to build up muscle memory. Because I can do it with the pen at this point with my wrong hand. See, my, my bow hold is correct and I'm not ruining anything. I would first start with the pen and then move up to doing it with the hand because when I do it with my wrong hand, ooh, it's really hard. So yeah, work first with the pen or the pencil, but do practice the bow hold with the real hand and just practice like holding it and then maybe start with like, tiny TikToks. And then you can work up to being able to do the full TikTok. Um, but yes, this one, 
I do believe is one, yeah, I can't, I don't have nearly the flexibility with this hand as I do with the other hand. And I think the hardest thing on this one for me when I do it with my wrong hand is that it's hard to bring my thumb back to being bent. So make sure when you go down that you bring it back and bend the thumb. And also it kind of helps for me to have a little something, almost like a goal, you know? Anytime you see a goal line, it helps you know where to go to. So I would have your hand below it, you know, to be the resting point. To just touch, touch, touch. And like I said, um, make sure to keep your thumb bent as you pull up. Um, I'm seeing if there's any questions. Um, dare you to grab the bow hair. Selling ham, absolutely not. A true violinist would never. Um, <laughs> quarantine is making people go mad. Yes, it is. Um, but we can all still, oh uh, gosh, there are some very interesting comments here. Um, Bose is the best ever from um, Naj Marmar. Yes, it is. By the way, for those of you who showed up late, I am wearing my awesome Bose headphones because I just love them so much and I appreciate Bose sponsoring this. Um, also, um, Bose, as part of this, is um, donating a lot of money to help COVID-19. So I think that's really cool. This is a partnership um, where all the proceeds are going to donation. So yay, by being here, you're supporting people and you're supporting charity and you're supporting um, those who are sick right now. Um, okay, sorry, going back to bow technique. Okay, so I want to now show some, this might be a little more advanced for some people. Um, I want to talk about how to keep the bow straight. I'm gonna back up so you can see my bow a little bit better. Okay, so a really, really important thing about getting good tone on a violin is the ability to keep your bow straight. Okay, I'm just gonna. Okay. So, there are a lot of mechanics that go into keeping the bow straight. So, one of the most important things is realizing that your arm is broken up into like, I'm gonna say three basic parts. You've got your upper arm. Okay, you've got your upper arm your lower arm, and your wrist. And they all have a different part to play in creating a straight bow. So first of all, your upper arm is for changing bow, <laughs> changing strings. So when you wanna cross from one string to the other, the E is the lowest string, then the A, then the D, then the G. And so the upper arm is like the hinge from the shoulder to make your bow go from string to string and still stay straight um, and get good tone. Second thing is the upper arm is for when you're at the frog of the bow, the low, the low part of the bow. Knee, it can't get to it if you don't use your upper arm. The lower part of your arm is for the, la the upper part of the bow to keep it. So like, as you can see, let me go over that. So if I'm at the E string, my arm is down. It's down low, hinging from the shoulder. The upper arm is low. Then if I go to the A string, it comes up a little bit, hinging from the shoulder. If I go to the D string, my, arm, my upper arm hinges up a little bit more. And if I go to the G, so it all starts. See that? It's just dip, dip, dip. All right. Also, like I said, the upper arm comes into play when I'm playing at the frog of the bow. See, it's me. A spam person called me. <laughs> um, yeah. However, once you get, so to get to the lower part of the bow, you have to bring your upper arm in. However, once you reach the middle part of the bow, or even like the last two thirds of the top of the bow, you're going to be just using your upper arm, or this part, your forearm. And you see the, the top part of your arm, I should have used the actual 
actual like anatomical terms for this, but um, this part of your arm does not move really at all once you get to the upper two thirds of the bow. The upper part of the arm moves when you're at the frog and then it kind of stops and the rest of the movement comes from your lower appendage of your arm. See? And then once I get to about here, the upper arm starts to bring it up. So those are basically, I know that's a lot of rambling, it probably sounds like, but those are really important mechanics of the fact that you have to think, like when you're at the frog of the bow, you have to think upper arm moving down and then it kind of comes to a point where they're both moving a little bit and then the upper arm stops and the lower arm finishes. So that's how that works. Okay, so you can see it in action. thing I'm thinking about is 
Bending the wrist, bending the wrist, and the arm, upper arm, middle arm, lower arm, wrist, upper, like, no, that's not what I'm thinking. Um, but I practiced it and practiced it and practiced it enough so that it became muscle memory. And all these things will someday become muscle memory for you, I promise. That is why, though, the violin is, um, they say, the most difficult instrument to play, is because there's so many mechanics in it, so many fine details that use the different muscles of the body, everywhere, all the way to this little tiny pinky muscle from your neck. <sighs> okay, so here's some exercise. You can do one. I really think it's beneficial just to slowly practice um, the bow movements, you know, while thinking about the different, like, like I said, upper arm, together, lower arm, lower arm, together, upper arm. But a nice thing to do is starting, if that's too much for you to focus on right now, I would say do that very slowly, and slowly is the key, and it's gonna probably sound scratchy, but that's fine uh, for now. But here's also an exercise that you can do that might be a little more doable, is put the tip of your bow on your violin and make sure that you've got the correct form, that your wrist is you know, kind of pushing down. It's almost like your wrist is pushing down. Whoop. Yeah, I don't want it up like this. I want it kind of pushed down and extend it out. And then go to the frog of the bow. And now my wrist is in that opposite position where it's kind of above the bow. Fingers are bent a little extra. And the shoulder is, um, you know, I'm like kind of all the way up. So go from that to that. So like frog to tip exercises. And make sure that you're hitting the tip right in the place you want it. And doing it in a way you're going. And I think it's probably easiest to look at, but also when you get to the tip, look in the mirror and make sure that it's not crooked. That it's not, and it's pretty hard for it to be crooked the other way. The thing that is most likely to happen is that for your arm to come back, as you're going to the tip, this is not good. One, because look at that, that's never gonna make a pretty sound when I come back. If you're going crooked, it's gonna kind of squeak and make a harmonic like that, which you do not want. You want a nice strong tone. The best way to get a nice strong tone is by going the full length of the bow and being able to do that when you need it. So again, when you go from frog, First of all, make sure your bow isn't like this because the, the natural thing that's probably going to happen is when you go up to the frog, your bow wants to curve and go around like that because your arm is going like this if you're not careful. That's like the natural thing. Whenever people pretend to play the violin, that's what they do. They go like this. And that's never going to work because that would send your bow from here. Like if you don't bend your arm properly, this is what happens if you just kept, you know, so that's why I talked about you need to start with the upper arm coming down, then the arm opening up from the elbow, so both are moving, and then just the elbow down moving. Upper, together, lower. Um, and then the wrist, like I said, kind of goes from this motion. But yeah, to practice that, a really good way is to just go tip, frog, tip, and then again, when you go to the tip, Make sure it's straight. That's what you want. So be looking in the mirror, and then go to frog. Make sure your wrist is bent and up like so, and that your shoulder, or sorry, that your upper arm from the shoulder has come in. Then when you go to the tip, check, make sure, yep, we're perfectly straight. And if you're like this, that's okay, just fix it. And then go, boop, go down. And when you come down, make sure there's just a little bend in your arm still, that your wrist, like I said, is in this position, and that you're not back here. That's another important thing. Your upper arm should never go behind you when you're bowing. If it goes behind you, you're in trouble. So, yeah, you wanna keep, you wanna keep your upper arm, the, the farthest it goes back, look, is right there. It never comes back here. It just stays right at my side, and then it comes up to help with the frog and with string crossing. Okay, is all that making sense? Oh, wow, I'm out of time. I'm so sorry, I spent so long. I have just a couple other tips for, um, for you. What were some of my other tips? So, 
I hope that helped with the bow um, straightening. Another nice tip, and the reason that I have, that you have to be so um, loose in the wrist. So remember, this exercise is a really good one that will help you with your bow movement because um, as you see, when I really play, my wrist is like, it has to be loose, it has to cushion the bow. Um, so like, for example, when you wanna start doing bouncy bows, um, you have to have that cushion in your wrist. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to create some of the sounds that you're gonna to want to create. For example, um, in the song Underground, I wrote, um, I have two choices of how to play the beginning part of the song, or once the beat kicks in, the first verse. Um, the way I want to play it is with a bouncy bow. So. so you see that the bow is literally, each note is a graze. And so my wrist, as you can see, is like, duh, 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 duh. you probably can't see, but it's going like this, it's bouncing with the violin. It is not coming from my arm. If I locked my wrist and hadn't practiced these kind of exercises and TikToks, because also it's my pinky that is allowing my bow to stay. So if I hadn't practiced TikToks and gotten a strong pinky and a good bow hand with a bent thumb, a bent pinky that's balancing the bow, and if I hadn't learned how to make my, loo my wrist loose, then it would sound like, it would be like this. I, you cannot bounce the bow if it's coming from your arm. Ah, see, I'm even still moving my wrist, but because my arm is locked, I'm hitting extra strings. It's not as light. It's not as like as consistent. Like if my wrist is literally, it's much scratchier, and it's coming from the old whole arm, and I would get exhausted. I would get absolutely exhausted. So I have to. I had to do all those exercises so it could be a nice. A lot of it is coming from the wrist. And another way to practice in order to get that good wrist movement, this is again for like more advanced players, but another way to get wrist movement is by practicing, if you have a song that you like, practice it very slowly just by moving your wrist and fingers. So, Play the whole thing. It's not going to sound good, but it's a great exercise to force your fingers and your wrist to get used to working together and being loose enough to play. Um, so you can pick any song you like and you can just um, play it like that. Also, for anyone who's trying to bounce their bow, what you're going to need to do is you need to find the balance point of your bow. Oh gosh. See, there's a point on your bow where it, ooh, it will balance. And you need to find that balance point, and that is where you will be bouncing your bow. So it's about. It's right about here on a bow. I'm trying to show you. Oh. So it's like two thirds of the way, a little less than two thirds of the way, or one third of the way through the bow is where you'll have the best. Best bounce on your bow. Um, also another reason that it's so important to practice those TikToks and this bow dexterity stuff and that in the wrist and in the fingers is because when you do string crossing, you don't want to always be just doing this, especially once it gets faster. Yes, your shoulder will help you with the big ones, but you also, so for example, in here's a song Transcendence that I um, used to play a lot. So it's not like I'm... partially from my shoulder, but it's also coming a lot from my wrist kind and my fingers, kind of like those TikToks. It's all coming from the wrist in that. 
Um, and like I said, bigger string crossings, of course, require... lighter and um, less scratchy sound if you can learn to help from the wrist but I think the the most important thing to learn today is that the bow is so important to playing the violin and it's all about being connected all the way from your shoulder to the tips of your fingers it's a fluid movement and I you know I dance while I play and I'm jumping all over the stage and I guarantee you the only reason I can move while I play is because I've learned to isolate this muscle group and it is its own thing. It is doing its own thing while I'm jumping around that stage and kicking my legs up in the air. I guarantee you this never changes. And the, and I practiced for years to get this motion, this, this motion, but you can too. It all starts with little exercises, even littler exercises with these little fine tuned movements. And after you practice them with a pen, you can move to the violin. Once you practice them with just the bow, move them onto the violin so that you're going from this to When you're doing bow articulation, you're always at least using a little bit, but those exercises of isolating them help you to learn how to um, feel them, right, and be able to use them together. Okay, I went way over my time, uh, but I want to just thank you guys for joining. Uh, I hope you learned something that will help. Um, if you guys like this, you'll have to let me know over on my Instagram so that uh, I can do it again. Maybe I'll partner with bows again, um, but this is a lot of fun, and I just want to say... Thank you, stay safe, stay home, and um, I wanna thank Bose for giving me this opportunity and giving me the, the gusto to finally do a tutorial. And also thank you, Bose, for um, taking the funds from this and putting it towards a good cause and charity and helping to save lives. Everyone stay home, stay safe, stay safe wash your hands, and hey, use this quarantine time to practice your bow hold. Thank you very much.